Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Conan and Cuba YouTube Q&A. We are live on the internet. How's everybody doing? Uh, why, why, please, why I just like, you, I just like to start, start with clapping. clapping. I just like to start with clapping. That was so lame. It's a good energy. It's a good it energy. It really isn't. The sound of three people. <laughs> there's nothing sadder than the sound of three people clapping. Uh, In a small, depressing me, room. I hear it all the time. Exactly. Uh, we're here with uh, writers Jesse Gaskell and Jose Arroyo, and of course, Conan O'Brien, right. um, and uh, we'll be taking your questions uh, for the next hour, so uh, leave them in the uh, in the YouTube chat below. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find that link in the description below. Um, and so let's just start out just very quickly with how did Cuba, how did it happen? How did this episode even come about? I'd like to start first with my question, which oh, is what God. room is this? This is we're, we're we're in a very we're in a very depressing room where they shoot the digital pieces, I guess, on the show. I've never seen this room before. They brought me in here and it was like the scene where Joe Pesci thinks he's gonna get made in Goodfellas. <laughs> and I really thought they were gonna shoot me, it's so depressing. Why are, what are we in here for? We have such a beautiful studio. Why are we here? Uh, uh, this is where we shoot a lot of the digital stuff, and it's our little right. uh, it's our little digital hidey hole. It's also it's also where a very depressing Depressed businessman has an affair. <laughs> so anyway, excuse our set. I wanted to start with that. We spent all the money going to Cuba, and now we're here on college furniture. I like that they've made it look like a garage. Yeah, like, it really is. Stain you know, you can't see over there, but if they can turn these cameras around, it's the most depressing room in the history of depressing rooms. But anyway, please. <laughs> Let's continue with our version of Death of a Salesman. Yeah, so so uh, on that on the uh, on the exciting upbeat note of uh, this depressing room. Um, yeah, I mean, how did it, how did it come about? You've you've you've, asked, you've said this before in other on other shows and stuff, but just for the people who might not have seen that other media, yeah, it, like where did the idea come from? How did it all kind of how did how did it work? Okay, uh, I'll well, get the, this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And ah, fired <laughs> immediately. Fired. Well, uh, President Obama. It was a big story in the news. Uh, uh, there has been an embargo um, on on Cuba. Uh, between the United States and, and, and Cuba since, well, well, the revolution was 1959. I think the embargo is pretty much in place 62? by 61, 62. So uh, for longer than my life, there's been an embargo. And then President Obama announced that it was time to try a new approach and they were going to try and normalize relations with Cuba. That was in December. Almost immediately after that, I believe uh, Mike Sweeney, our head writer, said, wouldn't it be great if we went to Cuba? And the minute he said it, uh, I was possessed. I said, we've got to go to Cuba yeah. Yeah. immediately. It's such a great idea. I want to get there before The View <laughs> or The Chew. And uh, we knew that Wheel well, of Fortune... The Chew already went. The, yeah. Yeah, the Chew <laughs> went. Uh, we knew that Wheel of Fortune was going to go. We knew that uh, all these... <laughs> and I wanted, to, I wanted to get there first. Uh, and so we were possessed. So uh, yeah. a small group of us began working on it. Uh, how to make this happen and we found a uh, producer who does some work with European production companies uh, in Cuba and he's based in Vancouver and he said that he could help us and he knew how to do it awesome and his name's Michael Ch um, Pacino. Pacino I was gonna say Chimino but that's the director Pacino <laughs> the godfather yeah. so, um, so anyway he helped us we went in two waves uh, we brought Jose Arroyo and we brought Jesse Gaskell because they are both not only excellent writers, very funny writer producers, but they also are uh, fluent in Spanish. And we thought you guys would be naturals, and you were. They, you were you terrific, made amazing contributions, and you deserve a lot of credit. Credit you'll never get. <laughs> <laughs> no one will see this. And how much how, how much planning went in? Because obviously you couldn't. You were just going to kind of all go. How much planning went into what to do there? Like, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of research or beats that you guys thought because you can't just arrive and then right. let's make no, a show. Yeah. So how did that kind of come about? How did you guys kind of come up with those ideas? It was pretty basic. We actually got guidebooks on Cuba just to figure out what's oh. in Havana, what we could. Find, what we could tour, what we could see, mm -hmm. what we could visit, and we went from there. And then we, you know, we know that Conan is uh, is great in certain situations and yeah. just uh, hanging out, improvising, and uh, so. But the the tour guides were really our 
because I don't know anything about Cuba. I, <laughs> Wikipedia. Was Wiki Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Why? Thank you, Wikipedia. You guys actually went on Wikipedia. Oh, sure. So that's hilarious. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Well, well, we, uh, pitched, we, I mean, we pitched a ton of ideas, and right. it was a lot of it, too, was just based on how do we get permission to film in certain places, because right. that wasn't... I'm, I mean, they're not really set up. It's not like... It's not L.A. where they have... Everyone offers film permits. Right. So there were just specific things that we thought of that, that ended up not working out because, you know, there's no possible way to film a, right. a baseball game or something. But. Right, right. Uh, so we also wanted to kind of run and gun. We wanted to stay under the radar. So yeah. we didn't want to be too conspicuous. So we... we uh, I thought we, we rolled into sites pretty quickly and we shot. People were very unselfconscious. They were very gracious. That's great. Uh, I think that comes across in the in the special. And um, we basically just went through a list and we chose what were the things people watching right now could probably figure out. Uh, what would I be? What's a good environment for me? Right. And uh, so me learning how to do a sensual dance, well, I'm going to look stupid. That will that should be funny. Sadly, yes. it is funny. <laughs> me trying to sing is funny. Uh, there were just certain things we knew would be a safe bet. But we also had this agenda from the beginning, which is we didn't want this. Uh, I obviously do a lot of remotes where the emphasis is on pure 100% comedy. We wanted this to have a sensitivity and a sweetness to it. Right. So. It, we did not pick solely for hard-hitting comedy. We did not want to be snarky, and we really wanted to respect the people and the culture. And uh, and I think we achieved that goal. There's a that's a thing that I've heard uh, a, a lot of the feedback today has been people noticing that it's funny, but not at the expense of anybody there. Yes, the joke is. As I'm more comfortable when the joke is on me. I think, right, I right. think we achieved that. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. And, and actually, uh, Jose uh, Limonchi asked, uh, how do you feel, looking back now, do you feel honored that you were the first kind of host to go there? Or like now that the, the episode is out and people are enjoying it and the feedback yeah. is great? Well, I don't think honored is the right word because that would imply that I was asked by the government to go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, and I'm, sure they, okay. I'm sure they would have asked anyone else. <laughs> So I, it wasn't an honor so much as I feel lucky. I feel lucky that that we had the idea and that I have the team that can pull it off quickly. I mean, yeah. Jeff Ross, our executive producer, was masterful uh, at, at jumping on it right away. Um, Mike Sweeney, our head writer, uh, was amazing. Um, I've got terrific writers here that all threw in ideas. Jesse and Jose got the tone immediately. They're yeah. very sensitive to it. And... Um, Jason Chalemi deserves a big shout out. He is the guy that makes things happen on the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is like the the robot we send in first. <laughs> the drone. He's the people yes. in curling that sort of grease the ice. He, yeah, he greases the ice. Yeah. <laughs> He's the robot that goes in, you know, to the fire and, and, and sees can a human withstand this? And Jason Chalemi was, as always, heroic. I mean, Jason, J Jason, I think started with me as an intern back in the 90s and he's been with me ever since and he is a hero and our crew I mean we had an amazing yeah. those cameramen and sound guys they were they're hauling giant equipment and yeah. they yeah. made there's so many beautiful stuff. shots shots where you're yeah. on me dancing and then you pan over sp to a dog barking and then we were able to make that joke that ends the show right. I thought was a, 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 such a great it, it's such a sweet moment yeah. where I'm dancing at the end and then we undercut it. So I mostly feel lucky. I feel yeah. lucky that we got to go. Uh, I feel fortunate that I had the right team and I feel uh, proud that I think we handled this the right way. I'm yeah. very proud that I think we treated this I'm uh, uh, with a lot of sensitivity and, and kindness. It has a good spirit, the show, and that to yeah. me was important. And actually talking about kind of getting in there and being a little run and gun, uh, how did that the talk show desk kind of come about? That whole thing <laughs> that was so <laughs> that was so, that's such a great uh, it's such a great moment in the street there and with the kid and the the, the Q and A. You know what's great is that we well you guys should talk about this, but we um, we knew we wanted to do something like that, but we didn't know where. Yeah. Um, Michael uh, Pacino found, or somebody yeah. found, an old microphone that we knew we needed, and I brought the linen suit. <laughs> but awesome. other than that, 
we spent, remember that yes. there was a morning where we're looking for a location and we went to one location, it wasn't right, we went to another, and then we're just looking and then we found yeah. the street. And then just, you guys tell the story of how we quickly turned that into a talk show set. Well, the idea was to do as spontaneous a, a talk show table and chair as possible. Uh -huh. And we thought, well, we'll, we'll find a folding table, card table and a folding chair. That was, even that was hard to acquire at the last minute. The, the thing with the Cuban government is if you start setting up something, people will come right over and demand papers. Are you reporters? Wow. Are, you are you here? Authorized are you to authorized film? to film yeah. on this street? Wow. So we're walking down that street that we wound up at, and there's a cafe there. Table already there, <laughs> chair already there. Sure. So all we can, and a band cafe. Oh my God. in the cafe. Sure. So a band of uh, four band. women, <laughs> four great vivacious women they had what's the name of their band deva 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 and we just said to deva would you be our band and they said yes and and we pulled a cafe table over yeah. we asked the cafe they said I think yes we paid some french women to leave their table yes yes <laughs> we paid, that's right there was a french right. family sitting at that table and we gave them to a table. money uh to leave and uh i always do that whenever i go to a restaurant I, I <laughs> if there's any french if there are french people there I, I say, I want that table. And I throw a couple hundred bucks at it. But then um, we really quickly set up, and there was a great uh, Jose and Jesse. Or Jose was writing cards, cue cards. cards, which I'm sure is a union violation. He was writing, <laughs> he was, uh, writing cue cards furiously. Um, you know, Jesse's helping to get it, the whole thing set up. It was wrangling. I mean, there were a lot of looky loos that were kind of stuff. Like, I don't think they knew. Looky I don't think loos. they knew who we were, but they no. thought. This is this looks important, right? Right. So I I want to stay right. and watch. <laughs> the cameras we had in Cuba were so big; they uh. were very they're not none, nothing inconspicuous about it. So yeah. we looked like something official. Yeah. I actually think that helped keep some people at bay. It was like, oh, yeah. they must know what they're right. doing. Look oh, at the size no of the cameras. We did. didn't. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we had we brought very good equipment because another thing that we're very proud of with the. Uh, Cuba show is uh, the the even though it's video, I'm going to use the word which is incorrect, cinematography. But it just yeah. looks beautiful. Yes, Cuba is such a visually stunning place to shoot that we wanted to capture that. So we brought excellent equipment. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know we just didn't want to shoot this. There are scenes in the special that are shot with Jose's iPad. Oh, yes, um, yes, yeah. a wild taxi uh, ride. Yeah, yes. The taxi yes. ride, the that wild taxi amazing. ride is is just Jose with his with his iPad. Um, by the way, the <laughs> iPad is a fantastic device. <laughs> you get some free ones. Use some more. That'd be great. Yeah, um, really a big fan of the Apple Watch coming up. <laughs> but uh, but we were uh, we we threw that together very quickly. Yeah. And I, what was fun is the people. In the background, I love the loose feeling. Yes. A caricature artist just walked up. I think you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And handed yeah. me a caricature uh, on the spur of the moment. It's the most dreadful uh, <laughs> representation of myself I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I think we have it right uh, here. Uh, yeah. There oh. it is. I think it's okay. it's me in 30 years uh, if I'm injected with the DNA of Ed McMahon, <laughs> and then I and then I people. melt. He drew other staff members, and it was just. Everyone's insecurities highlighted. Yeah, yeah. Out of paper. If I look like that, I should get off television immediately. Uh, Shay Muller asks, uh, "What was the biggest culture shock?" Is it shock? Mueller or Mueller? Or Mueller? I guess there's an Great E question. in there, so maybe Anyone? it's Mueller. Let's turn this around on Shay. Yeah. Yes. Shay. Is it, is it Mueller or Muller? Mueller or Muller? <laughs> I'm gonna say Mueller because it kind of rhymes like with Bueller. Bueller, right? Yeah. Uh, what was the biggest culture shock of your visit? P.S. I love you. Um, so, I can say yeah. I. Well, one thing I noticed on the very last day we were there, I saw a dog on a leash, and that was the first time I had seen a dog on a leash. The whole time <laughs> yes. we were there because leashes. Yeah, dogs leashes. are just roaming, There's conducting dogs business. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. You're walking down the street, and there'll be a dog with no owner, and he's just, and you're like, you know, hola, and he's like, woof, woof. <laughs> they're just, they're doing their own thing. They're they're out and about, and it's refreshing. I was also struck by what really the the lack of internet. Yes, you know it's something oh, yes. we take so much for granted here. Definitely. And you keep looking at your phone, um, and Ren realizing, oh, this is a useless brick. Yeah. Right. Was there any was there any internet there at all? 
Was there at the hotel. hotel. At the there hotel. Was but you had spotty internet. Yeah. You, it was spotty internet, and you had to enter a uh, like seventy-eight digit code <laughs> to access the internet. <laughs> yes. It would then be open, for, available for for you to send one email, you know, to your loved one to say, "I am." I am still alive and well, yeah. and then it would shut down. And you take out the crumpled piece of paper and start entering the seventy eight code again. That's right. So yeah. there was a window that you could use the internet dur during which you could use it, and then also the speeds, the transmission speeds, were much slower than what we're used to here. Sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it must be. I, you guys actually had to talk to each other, which was yeah. 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 It's the first time That's I've seen right. Jeff Ross's eyes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he lives looking at this, and then he he was forced to look into. <laughs> My ojos. <laughs> My ojos. Well, um, I, we had burner cell phones while we were there. That ooh, like Breaking were, Bad. So we could, yeah, yeah so awesome. we could communicate with each other, but even those were very... They didn't work very did well. Did not work yeah. well, and one thing we learned was they don't work when you're driving. So what? if oh. you're moving, you can't use the cell phone, which is actually kind of a good idea, I think. That's, I yeah, they right. should do that here. That you know what's interesting is, I was so, that was one of the most exciting things about the trip, is just as we were leaving, we were going in under the radar, we were doing this very quietly, and just as we were about to leave, we were all assigned burner cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> and you never feel like a greater pimp than yeah. when you're assigned a burner. When someone hands you and says, here's your burner, you're like, yeah. And immediately you have this urge to get math, yeah. to do something illegal, you know? And then the minute you're done talking, you want to break it in half. And throw it in the ocean. Yeah. Water. Shay Mueller is from German. Ah, there we go. German. Is you live, you, you live I'm German. I see. Okay. okay there we go. Uh, Mr. Mr. Steve Pick asked, uh, "Is there, and maybe there's not, but what's kind of the biggest misconception would you guys say about that the rest of the world has about Cuba? Not to speak for the rest of the world, but um, we can't. I want, it's a very important distinction to make. We were in Havana. We we did not have the time to leave Havana and go into Cuba. Uh, yeah. Havana and Cuba are quite different. We're told. Oh, is that true? Yeah. That that uh, and. So I just always want to make that clear that sure. I, we can't speak for the experience of I, being. I yeah. agree. You guys are all. It's like that. trying to say that uh, if you go to New York City, that you've seen the rest of the U.S. Oh, yeah, great, it's very, it's great very different. It's great very analogy. different. So, um, I uh, you were brought. You're actually hired for your analogies. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's, that's your whole metaphor job man. here. Yes, yeah. metaphor man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, what was the question? I, I was just saying, in, in terms of a misconception. So you guys kind of really only saw Havana, which is like, uh, yeah. To use metaphor, man. Metaphor. Yes, yeah. I, I, I it's think it's very one of, tourist. One of the things is the America has been sort of locked out of Cuba. Yeah. So there's this feeling that oh, they're not, it's an island lost in time. I think that's a misconception right. because they're steadily visited by Canadian tourists. Um, you know, a European tourist, South American tourist. Right. So um, they're they're getting a lot of uh, they're, they're they're getting a lot of contact with the outside world, just not with Americans. Ah, that's a that's a that's an excellent point. Um, and and so, was there a pressure while you were there because you were only there for such a limited time and you knew you were kind of going to do a show to shoot everything, or did you guys get to have a little fun? Uh, you know, and go out to restaurants or experience any of like the nightlife. Like, w what was that like? Like we, after... we did have fun from the hours of 12 to 4 a.m. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then, yeah. then 4.30 a.m. immediately back to shooting. We did, uh, yeah, we did, uh, I think, m myself less. I think I knew <laughs> I, did, I had to be on camera You're on lockdown, day. yeah. So I, I would go, you know, I was impressed with how quickly we started shooting. Yeah. We thought, we don't know how long we're going to be here, and we don't know if someone's going to stop us at some point, yeah. and we're going to be asked to leave. Right. So the minute we got there, we were little Pac-Mans eating as many pellets as we could. That's yes. right. Um, old reference. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> but um, we, we, we did our best to shoot a lot, but then when we were done with the assignments for the day, and we really thought we'd covered it, we would get a bite to eat and hang out. Uh, I did drink a lot of rum. It's so good. I mean, you have to. You the, have to. the uh, mojitos are amazing. The daiquiris are great. I mean, you just I just wanted to try every single rum drink, just straight rum. And we also smoked cigars. Why not? Sure. Why not? I mean, we were. And so there were yeah. times where all of us were sitting around smoking cigars. We would never do that in America <laughs> no. because it is. 
when you, when you see America, there's something about when people in Cuba are doing it, it's cool. Yeah. If you're if you're a guy doing it in America and you've got a little thing of rum and you're <laughs> a cigar, it's the poster for douchebags. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and I immediately hate people that are doing right, that. Right. So we thought this was the one place we can do it and it'd be cool. But you guys partied hard, I have to say. And the cameramen. I'm surprised <laughs> our camera our, our camera crew uh, and sound guy I'm surprised they're alive <laughs> well, that's, because... I did feel like we were sort of there to kind of make sure that no one died a little bit. <laughs> so, oh, so you're saying, so you're, we saying you're partying Jesse was selfless yeah, yeah. it was it was honorable <laughs> it was altruistic party it absolutely party. was but oh. there was so much stress during the day, there was. that it had to be right. there had to be yeah. an outlet mm -hmm. for it, and, and that was the night. And sure. and sure. and uh, the they would our guys would <laughs> the camera crew. I would see them for breakfast in the morning, and they would have come back an hour earlier. Yeah. Yes. And oh they God. just were wrecked, and they would they would be having like whatever breakfast was available. Would you know they'd be having like a, a croissant and some powering some coffee, and then they would go and take. There was a sauna. Uh, a steam room somewhere in the hotel and they would go and they would sit in that for a while and drink a lot of water sweat it out. and then be yes. right back yes <laughs> so um, uh, we should keep going we should answer some questions yeah yeah uh, a rubble it's 2000 actually said it was less of a question but thank you for uh, letting them uh, join you for the Cuba screening so do you want to kind of talk about how you premiered uh, we had a little screening here in the studio yeah I was happy that was an idea I had I as the show started to come together and we started to realize we've we've got something important yeah important we have something that we're really proud of and it looks beautiful rather than we wanted to show it with with a with a audience reaction mm -hmm. because that's how most people experience when we show remotes on the show we traditionally screen them for an audience so that there's reaction to it and I think that helps uh, bring it to life so we thought we should do that with the Cuba show but let's do something special so I had the thought let's dress up our set yeah. with Cuban flags and uh, palm trees let's invite an audience especially to come see the show uh, I think they did it through I think your sister yeah yeah my sister who does the the audience for the show yeah and we had a, a contest yeah, to, yeah. to get everybody had yeah. a contest and so people in the contest when they came they got Conan and Cuba hats. They got shirts and, shirts. and Cuban food. Yeah, um, uh, everyone got a Nissan Sentra. <laughs> <laughs> Eighty-eight Nissan Sentra. Because <laughs> I can't do the new cars like Oprah and Ellen. And, uh, no, but every, we gave everyone shirts and hats, and then we showed them. I came out and talked to them, and then in between where the where the commercial breaks would normally be, we obviously didn't screen commercials. I came out and talked to people to try and tell them the way I'm talking now you know this is what happened this is what's coming up next and yeah. give them a few behind the scenes and then at the end I wasn't supposed to but I just started taking questions and that was <laughs> we, I think it, I think you're gonna put that out we're gonna put that out too yeah so that's coming uh, uh, either tomorrow or, uh, or or early next week but yeah a whole Q&A over Conan kind of tells a lot of very juicy behind the scenes tidbits about uh, about Cuba which is right. fantastic and, and one of one of my favorite stories actually if you could talk for a minute about returning back to the US about kind of getting the footage out because yes. that was we shot you guys shot this scary. whole thing and now how do we get it back it starts with you guys will tell it but yeah it, it started with 24 hours before we were supposed to return home or less than 24 hours our producer Jeff Ross was notified that um, a news outlet had heard probably through tourists that we were right. that I was there and they were gonna run with the story and we asked them could you hold it until we at least get out of off the island with the footage and they yeah. said you know we really we're afraid someone else is gonna have it so we need to run yeah. with it and we were nervous yeah. that okay it's gonna now be out it's gonna be it was a deadline Hollywood and it might it's gonna get around and it did become news yes. that I was it was at the same time of the S as the SNL 40th anniversary, so we were hoping that that was getting so much press that no one would really notice. <laughs> <that story. laughs> but it, it did get some press, and then we decided we'd uh, we had make to copies. Yes, we split up. Um, wow! So we put, we put <laughs> it's like Mission show. Impossible. This is crazy. Well, yeah, we had them in cartridges that came off the cameras, uh -huh. and we put those. We backed those up on uh, portable hard drives drive and, and, the laptops. and also Jeez. on laptops, so that if some of the uh, the stuff got stopped by customs that at least maybe some of the others would, would get through. Sure. Well, and so. the crew had gone through, they went back through Toronto, and they had all the 
the actual SD cards and the camera equipment. So mm -hmm. they're walking through with two professional cameras and 15 cases of <laughs> camera equipment. Yeah. And Customs immediately pulled them over and were like, what are you doing? Why did you... Did you have authorization from the State Department to go there? Wow. Oh Why did God. you go through Canada? That sounds really shady. You That's know? crazy. And yeah. So the they were degree. interviewed for, I think, half an hour before. They really got They finally, Jeez. I think how they got out of it was they produced a letter showing that they were working with Conan O'Brien. And then suddenly the customs guys were like, oh, what's he like? <laughs> and then, yeah. then it was all fine. Like, hey, could he so sign ahead. something? How do we a get lot of fans this? in Canada. So they, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Canada. There we go. <laughs> Um, Made in America asks, uh, Conan, what went through your head when the taxi door suddenly opened? I, I was, that was a real moment. I'm in the cab and uh, Jose was next to me. Our driver was uh, laughing maniacally. I don't know why, but he was laughing maniacally, which made me laugh maniacally, which made him laugh maniacally yes. even more. Yes. And then uh, the door just opened. And I looked and there was, we're going along at like 40 miles an hour. There's a lot of potholes. In yeah. Havana, and we're banging around, and suddenly there's nothing between me and the street, and I, I just looked, and I just, you know, I didn't panic or anything. I just was like, oh, and I reached over and I just shut the door, and then realized there's no seat belts. Right. That's another thing. Yeah. Whoa. None of the cars have seat belts, and a lot of the cars that you saw in the special are from the 40s, 50s. They just don't have seat belts. They haven't installed them since. Oof, and crazy. this car had no seat belts. So it was just one of those things where if I'd been leaning against the door, I just would have rolled out. <laughs> just, <laughs> but I did. And then it was, you can see, he starts laughing. Yeah. I just say, hey, I was almost killed. Guy laughing. You, you, <laughs> you just shooting it all with a... So the iPad shaking. Yeah. <laughs> I just happened to have it on. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was just unnerving. Seeing, yeah, it's almost like you set up that moment. Like, cue the door. <laughs> it is yeah. almost yeah. like On someone burner. set up that moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was all real. It's all real. <laughs> That's hilarious. Let's talk for a moment about the food in Cuba. A lot of people have been asking about the food. Uh, uh, and in uh, the episode, you guys go to this thing called a paladar. Which yep. is and and kind of explain sure. what the what the deal is there because restaurants are all state run, correct? So except right. well, yeah, that's why you all the restaurants are run by the state. Yeah, uh, and then starting in I think twenty years ago, yeah. they started allowing people to run uh, restaurants out of their home. If you say I like your restaurant to one of those people, they say oh, no, 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 we're not oh, a restaurant. We're Paladar. Yeah. Interesting. It's yeah. they are they're very it's careful about that distinction. Yeah. It's a loophole that allows them to to run uh, this. Uh, or gonna, you know, run something out of their home. The food was was very good. It's interesting when people think Cuban food, they probably think of what you might get in Miami. Sure, but right, I think it's right. very different because I think there's different. Uh, I think um, Cuban Americans have changed things. Like I, I, I didn't see. Cute, like Cuban sandwiches, like you might get in Miami. Right, I didn't right. see it's, that. And there's no fusion. Oh, it's just, it's not a, you know, the cooking tradition. It doesn't seem as uh, evolved as it would have been in Miami. There's more right. ingredients in the U.S. There's sure. Right, they're stuff. really limited by what's available on the island and what they're able to import. So, I mean, pork is really big. I noticed. Yeah. Like at breakfast, it was every incarnation of pork. You could imagine. <laughs> like sausage, yes. that's crazy. Or yeah, or and he bacon. bought pork no fat shit. on the street. Yeah, I mean, little yeah. cracklings mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh wow! So, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. No, but they pork they have there is huge, and uh, beans. they're using it and and uh, beans and so there was a lot of it was very good, uh, really good fish. Yes, um, fresh. and okay. and we had we went to two paladars. One of them is featured in the show. We mm -hmm. went to another one the, the next night, and both meals were really good. Um, and you know, you're having rum with everything. <laughs> there we go. I have to say, like, it, exactly that's, helps. <laughs> it smooth, it doesn't out. help my alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> Shana Lewis says, uh, Conan, please do six hours a night on CNN. Uh, Woo! A great uh, moment. That's the next yeah. step, I think. Exactly. I looked into it. The pay isn't great. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there any... I know, uh, obviously, we went to Finland, and, and then and now we've been to Cuba. Are, are there any particular places that, that you would want to go next? A lot of people have been asking. Is there anything out there? I mean, this is a special circumstance. This was, a, this was a special... I mean, uh, this will have its own flavor because a country that... This was so ripe. This was yeah. so perfect, and it, and and I really think uh, it was important that it happened, that we do this in this one moment of time. Yes. But I love uh, travel over the years through.
for a while through NBC. We went to Finland. Yeah. Uh, I shot in uh, Germany. I was in Cologne, and I shot there. I've loved Ireland. And, and, and Ireland. Yep. I've always secretly, in the way in the back of my head, thought I'd like my show to eventually one day morph into a show where um, I'm not bound in a studio, but I'm all around the world. Yeah. And uh, is it uh, Michael Palin? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Michael yeah, Palin sure. did it. He did a version of it, and I thought, I'd, I would love to do my spin on that someday. And um, you you guys would great. still be paid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see a lot of need for writers in that <laughs> kind no, of no, show. No. I but... have to learn some other languages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. We you need to make metaphors course. and you need to watch the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? No, but, I, but I, I do think it's, uh, obviously we love doing the show here. Uh, and the Warner Brothers lot, and we love. I still love the format of the late uh, the late night format. It's traditional, and it's a fun form to play with. And I love. Uh, I really do love interviewing people and trying to find something spontaneous in the moment. Yeah. And so all of that's fun, but I have to say we definitely want to do a lot more of this yeah. because yeah. it's invigorating. That's. I mean, it's, yeah, that's true. everybody yeah. on staff. Not just uh, for the show, but the whole digital department. You guys, everyone's been so jazzed by the experience, so hyped up yeah. about it and excited that I think it's led to a lot of ancillary creativity. For sure, absolutely. Um, and all, along those lines, too, please go to teamcoco.com slash Cuba. There's behind-the-scenes videos of stuff that didn't make it into the show and just these guys all hanging out. Recipes. Uh, recipes, <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, puzzles. There's, there's puzzles. There's puzzles. <laughs> Mazes you can... Uh, there's a Where's Waldo. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. that, uh, we actually stole. We don't have to to. Uh, Edgar Shue asks, uh, Coney, did you bring back any vino seco? Uh, yeah. did, did you guys bring back any souvenirs or any of that stuff? Or I mean, you know, I have to say, I, was, I, I did one thing. I... Uh, I think you see it for a second, but there's a place where I'm looking at books. It looks like a flea market. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They, someone was selling Cuban badges from the past. Wow. Um, uh, I, and I bought two badge. I bought two policemen's badges that look like they're from the 40s or 50s. Awesome. And they say, you know, Havana, Cuba. And then I bought one badge that says... Habana, uh, uh, inspector de auto, like bus inspector. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And I love the idea of having an authentic, it looked like a 1950s <laughs> badge <laughs> that a bus inspector would wear in, in Cuba. And I don't know what a bus that's inspector... That's a post you could aspire to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so You're I, slowly I brought, working your way to bus <laughs> yeah. inspector. Yeah. And I gave, I gave one of them uh, to my... I gave one of them to my son. And... Uh, I bought some jewelry set. They had a some someone was selling these really this really neat jewelry that is made. It's reproductions of coins from before the revolution. Whoa! And that's um, cool. so I bought something for my wife, and I bought something for my daughter. That's fantastic. And um, I just bought a lot of real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now the third largest landowner in Cuba. What, did you guys bring uh, anything back? Well, there, there's a hundred dollar <laughs> limit. There like, there's you can bring cigars back, but there's a oh, hundred dollar wow. limit. Okay. And uh, the same, so uh, for rum, for t alcohol and tobacco combined. Uh, and before, I guess when people used to try to bring cigars back into the U.S., they would just take the price tags off yeah. and say, "Hey, this you know yeah, costs less than a hundred bucks." Ten cents. Uh, yeah, but uh, but now they're easing that up on that, and uh, yeah. yeah, you can bring no some. Really asked. No, no one asked exactly, but um. I, Jesse, I Jesse smoke. bought a mule. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was wondering mule. about that in your office. And then yeah. I got Carry a mule on. to smuggle my mule. Yeah. <laughs> a mule, mule. Um, yeah, we sort of we had been looking at souvenirs throughout the trip and really wanted to buy some, and then never really had time until the last day. There were like at six forty-five, we went out and were and had fifteen minutes because all the stores were closing at seven. So it was like supermarket sweep, and we That's were just trying to go through. And yes. I ended up buying like. 20 magnets and that was all I got. Really. Then it erased my iPod and then it was terrible yeah. and all the film was erased because of all the magnets you bought. Yes. So really. Yes, that could um, all the magnets you bought weren't even special to Cuba. Yeah. <laughs> they just say Cincinnati. LA. They say yeah. Cincinnati Rock. Yeah. A lot of Nicolas Cage Prius magnets. Taxi. <laughs> Uh, Racket25 asks, did any of the people on the street recognize you? It must have been nice to kind of walk around and be 
anonymous for a while. Horrifying. Oh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrifying look at how regular people live. <laughs> Despised. Uh, no, uh, I mean, there are other tourists. You said there are other tourists yeah, there, obviously. Other, so. uh, tourists yeah. tourists uh, from other countries. Yeah. Who I was. Uh, Cubans uh, seem blissfully ignorant. That's right. That's right. But you were stopped by they people. They don't know and they don't want to know. <laughs> you were stopped by someone who remembered you from the Finland remote. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah. There were uh, a good but... number of international, I mean, Czechoslovakian people and or Czech Republic, and we would wow. ask how they had seen the show, and it was all online, which was cool. That's yeah, cool. a lot. It did. It was very gratifying how many people from different cultures, different countries would recognize me and say, oh, no, we... We watch the show all the time. Awesome. Through this medium, which yeah. I love. You yeah. Know, I um, I think it's great that that it's just nice for people to see your work. But I also would just get stopped by people that, you know, I'm six four and a half with orange hair. <laughs> yeah. I look like I look like a, a, a strange bird has gotten loose. <laughs> so there were people that wanted to stop me in Cuba just to see how do you stay alive? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Are you a real human being? A More medical yeah. questions uh, than, than, medical any, questions. than anything else there. Uh, and, and dumb question, but I mean, are you guys, would you guys love to go back? I mean, you said you didn't definitely. get time to really yeah. do much and explore. Yeah, definitely. Sure. That's been a big theme of my life is I'm always going to cool places, but yeah. I have to work the whole time. Right. And I would like to get outside Havana. I would love to see. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated to to drive around and, and really see more of the island of yeah. Cuba. And a yeah. lot of its sugarcane fields and yeah. And, and from what I hear, beautiful beaches. So it's said to be yeah. some of the best beaches in the Caribbean. So I would love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. And and you kind of make this uh, you kind of make this point in in the uh, episode, but. Uh, in terms of how much do you think the U.S. coming in will change the look of Cuba, or do you think? I mean, you kind of mentioned that they're welcoming that. The people, the people are welcoming. Are well, uh, the people are anxious for economic. Yeah. Uh, relief. E e you know, economic relief. They, they, they need, they need it. They, uh, they very much want um, to get to know us they want to do business with us that was the strong 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 sense we got just talking to people yeah that's fantastic uh dm uh asked uh can us tv be, air be aired in cuba now did you do anything there to promote this there's no there's I mean, nothing we can we're, we're well, going to do something cool why don't you t say yeah. what we're gonna do well there's a, uh you talk about the oh, the, yeah yeah well yeah, we don't know what well, we're talking about <laughs> we, we may get a chance to have our episode aired Right. On Cuban television, on we're Cuban looking into television. it. We're looking well, one thing it. we learned while we were there is that the way that a lot of people watch TV mm -hmm. is they get jump drives with like a terabyte of television from oh, the cool. US. Yes. Terabyte so is a computer term. Oh, yeah, and then got, you it. Pass it <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, and so yeah, so there it's kind of it's very grassroots, and as opposed to getting satellite TV, people will just right. have one drive that's passed around, and that's interesting. And so they can't, we, yeah, burner phone, I, they can't get the internet on. They, they right. they phones there? They uh, they do. Some people do. Some I saw do. some iPhones, yes. but um, internet access is severely restricted. Right, by the you government. have to go to yeah. pretty, pretty much an internet cafe, a government-run one, mm -hmm. and you pay. A high price, and you for can them. only look at certain sites. Exactly. So I'm sure that yeah. There's a severe. Oh wow! It's even. Wow. There's even a restriction. Yeah. 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 They're obviously they're they're <laughs> uh, interested. The the government has a has a pretty strict control. I think people can see and not see. Absolutely. Um. And uh, so that's something else that would be nice to see change. Absolutely. And that, that's yeah. opening up. Netflix sure. uh, announced that they would start. Streaming to Cuba. Whoa. And, Although uh, I don't know if people can watch it, but yeah. you know, the people, the people yeah. who have access can watch can, it. Yeah. I mean, it's still, but that I think that's going to spread. They can uh, finally catch well. up on Orange Is the New Black. Yes. Or yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, Ivan, uh, I don't even know how to say that last name. Ivan Cool. What do you think? Cool Jack. Cool, cool Jack. I'm gonna say Cool Jack. Cool Jack. Cool Jack. Cool Jack. Cool Jack. Uh, how many takes did it get for you to cross this uh, road? Oh, that was, <laughs> that was in real time. That was kind of in real time, but I was waiting for a while and couldn't get across and then noticed the cameraman was filming me and that's when I started. But it took <laughs> it's next to impossible to cross the road. And when I finally do, um, it was a little like pulling off a death defying act. And I love and that driver not... that speed almost sped up. Yeah, I think they yeah. Yeah. I think they get yeah. government credits if they hit yeah. if they, if they, if they hit an American <laughs> crossing the street. Yes. No, he just thought I was a flamingo. <laughs> right. Giant. Yeah, right. That, that was you know what I loved is all the all the good mo moments in the show and almost every every moment in the show is completely real. It's organic. Yes. We didn't set things up 
We didn't. Um, We're not that smart. No, no <laughs> we just a lot of it. A lot of it was which was nice is we. We, we went to places that were rich, and it, there's so many in Havana, but just yeah. rich with people, and they're very funny, and they're comfortable in, the, they're, they're comfortable in their own skins. They're comfortable with themselves, yeah. they, and they're very welcoming, and that just led to good comedy. It was, right. And so there was a right. lot of, what I liked is things like trying to cross the road, or all the babbling on the rooftop, yeah. and noticing people throwing doves, and there's so much where we just managed to get lucky and find places where we could something kind of interesting could happen and I think that comes across on the show is that you couldn't set this up yeah. it, would, yeah. it would be impossible right. and right. that's another thing we didn't use any stock footage so every car that you see every beautiful vista yeah. everything else was something Sunset. we saw yeah. in four days in Havana yeah. so uh, Except the yeah. part in the end of the show where the Death Star blew, blew up. <laughs> we may have that. We that. borrowed from <laughs> we borrowed that from George Lucas. Yeah, <laughs> right. he licensed it. Yeah. Um, what, what was something uh, and and kind of moving forward? Like, do you think that this experience has kind of changed the, the way you'll shoot remotes, or kind of uh, what, do you think it'll give you license to do more of this kind of genuine? I don't think it. I mean, first of all, our, or was it a our, time and a place? Our remotes, uh, our remotes have always been. Yeah. Very. I mean, if you look at even the ones we've done recently, going to the spa was was right. You know, yeah. That's just that's the two of us, and we uh, going through and 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 experiencing those things. All those people are real, right? Um, there, there is. Uh, I think. So I don't think it's going to change anything that way because there's always been a real spontaneity to right uh, to them. I think what what we are interested in doing is um, it's made us hungry to roam even further afield yeah know, right. where can yeah. we go what can we do sure I mean I think going into this it was all the question was can we pull this off and <laughs> right I, after yeah. I think we did and we're all really happy with the result which now makes us very probably overly confident about yeah, right. doing you've it you've now before. turned into right. rash horrible people because yeah. of that. what was one thing you guys kind of learned in terms of uh, uh, you know writing for this remote and, and, and that that maybe might affect you in the future in terms of giving you confidence, in terms of things you can pull off, or will it allow you to think of even crazier ideas? Like we should go to the moon. Well, or, that's it's funny. Well, the, more, the more, the <laughs> more you shut up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so in this particular case, and in many cases with uh, Conan on the remote. I'm going to speak as if you're not here. Uh, for just that's okay. Uh, and forget, forget that I'm your employer. <laughs> uh, the comedy is often found. You just it's yeah. uh, you create a very sort of a general structure, and then you let him play, and sure. then, and that's where the comedy comes from. So you don't want to come up with oh, then you go here and you say this. Yeah. You don't, sure, you don't, you sure. don't micromanage it, uh, and then the the looser you are, the more I don't know, the more fun you seem to have, and the more and the more spontaneous the comedy is. Yeah, uh, and people well, can kind of sniff that it's real or not. I think real. the Absolutely. best, yes. the best yeah, analogy yeah. I've ever heard for. What the what they do and what I do is it's their job to go out and construct a, a jungle gym that oh. then I go out and play on. Awesome. And I think what um, what we did, you know, uh, and and especially Jose and Jesse did, is they went ahead. We had a bunch of ideas of places to go, and they scouted them out. And they went a day before and scouted these areas. And I think we, they were, as a group, we were very good at selecting where places I might be comfortable. And I was yeah. pretty much comfortable right. everywhere. Yeah. And what happens is if you show up at a situation, then it doesn't, it feels, doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. If for mm -hmm. some reason it doesn't feel funny, mm -hmm. and this happens in remotes all the time, you go somewhere and you're just not feeling it, or the people seem uptight, or it's, you... And it it is like we're like you know we're like looking for truffles and we're yeah. just uh, I don't think they're here let's <laughs> yeah, go over there yeah. and so um, but I think uh, Jose and Jesse did a really good job of scouting ahead of time and they gave me a lot of confidence because they said okay we've been to this place right we 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 saw the person you're gonna take the tour with she's really good and I think we think it's gonna be great and they know me so well that that would give me confidence. And then yeah. I'd, I'd enter a good situation. 
It's yeah. not like I had to scrounge around looking for good situations. We we had a good plan going in, and 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 they really set it up well. Cool. It's but all sometimes about that kind of the, the, table. the what ends up being the through line of something isn't what we anticipated. Yes. Like in, oh, the, in the rum museum, we showed up thinking, oh, this is going to be really a fascinating sort of look and yeah. process, and then almost immediately realized this is actually pretty dry. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So to speak. Um, yes. and, and then my, my so need for alcohol. So yeah, but then that became <laughs> her joke. What's nice is that that was real, is that she's, yeah. Yeah. she, I think, had orders to take me on this very, very methodical tour of the Rum Museum. <laughs> and I think we were 10 minutes into it when I said, is is there a time when I get rum? And she said, yes, yes, but the tour first. And you get that moment on camera. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you can actually see me understand, oh, I've got my through rot line yeah. now. Yes. And then, you know, which part of where, which part of the me not having rum is this now? Yeah. And, then, right. and then the whole thing becomes, I want my rum. Yes. And she's keeping me from my rum. And all good comedy or and, all good story yes. is just... I want this, I want yeah. that, and yeah. we're, we're opposed. And then finally, people rejoice when I finally get my rum. Yeah, and then yeah. laying on the bar and Gretel singing to you. Oh, yeah, she's such a great so, support. That's amazing. Yeah. amazing. I know, that ended up being maybe one of my favorites, even though it wasn't initially supposed to be. when we got there, I uh, there was a, a lot of panicking taking place because... I wasn't sure that it was going to pan out the way we wanted. Right, because it was unexpected. But then yes. again, like I said, you kind of found found the comedy yes. there, which ends up ended up being absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mr. Miles asked, uh, "How much sunblock did you bring to Cuba?" <laughs> I uh, actually did bring. <laughs> it's no joke. I uh, I burn instantly. So um, I mean, I make a lot of jokes about it, but uh, I did bring serious stuff. sunblock. The, uh, it's made by the government. And, uh, <laughs> it is the real deal. It's about like. You know, micro, micro, oxidized zinc in it. You know, like, I've, got, I've got like a serious sunblock, <clears throat> just asphalt, just to... yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and and that Tech actually line. kind of uh, kind of brings me to the question of what besides the white suit? Did you get the white suit there? Or did you bring it? No, that uh, all uh, credit there goes to Bruce Brummage. Awesome, awesome. Bruce we had a Brummage. Feeling... Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, um, you're never to speak again. Uh, no, no. I, I was just. I just wanted to give props to Bruce Brummage. Yeah. We had an idea to bring a linen suit, and Bruce Brummage found some, but they he knew they weren't right. We wanted the classic Cuban 1940s white linen suit. Yeah. And um, and then uh, just hours before we left, Bruce walked into my office with that suit. Awesome. And I put it on, and it fit perfectly mm -hmm. and he had these the shoes and so i said you realize i'm i'm keeping these yeah. <laughs> oh. i'm buying them and i'm keeping them i don't know i just want to wear that suit but i'm sorry i cut you off Go no ahead. no no i was just gonna say that we had a feeling we wouldn't be able to fi to fit you with in, in yeah. cuban <laughs> that was yes. yeah exactly yeah There's... i look like peewee herman yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we actually have a great photo of it of him dancing oh here uh, yeah there i am Leo. there he is there dancing am. there yeah. Yeah. You I'm actually the on my toes. toes. On the toes. That's, That's great. That photo, yeah. And and was this uh, was, was this that you, Jesse? Did you yeah, take that picture? That is oh, one of my beautiful. favorite. Well, I pictures snapped ever. a ton, and yeah, and luckily. But I mean, in that, that moment, perfect. I'm in this sort of Michael it's Jackson crazy. on my toes, yeah, which is something I can't do. So I don't know how that happened. But. That's, that's awesome. And then was that was that parade? Was that something you guys came upon or you knew? Yes. yes. Yeah. That's it's amazing. Wandered, that's they insane. came through yeah, on stilts. Yeah. That's and crazy. All I need to do is like, oh, here I go. <laughs> you and were at I'm, stilt level. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're all, yeah. we had just wrapped taping on the street, and mm -hmm. there was this uh, you know touristy area where these stilt walkers uh, go by. And it just happened, we just happened to dovetail right at the time Amazing. when they were starting to, to parade yes. around. And so he And I asked them, is in. it okay if he dances with you? And I think they didn't even know that you weren't part of the group, but... You know, <laughs> they thought, so. I thought you were here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's one of us. Um, as we're starting to kind of wind down here, um, somebody asked kind of, what was your favorite memory, either from the show or just from the trip in general? Do you want to start, Jesse, or kind of just oh, to ask no. you the biggest question and to throw you under the bus immediately? What was your kind of biggest memory oh. that you kind of took away from the whole experience? I mean, it really was magical. I felt yeah. so just, I it, it was like we were, it, it was a perfect snapshot in time that we got to go there and, um, and everyone was so generous and friendly and like, I, I do think maybe my favorite moment is when we're on the Malacone and uh, we see that these guys are drinking boxed rum. 
Oh yes, yeah, so on the on the promenade there yeah. by the water, yeah. by the water. Yeah, and um, and Conan asked what they were drinking, and you know they just offered him their a box of rum, which is, <laughs> I, I think really emblematic of what we found in Cuba, which is just people. Oh, what is that? Hey, do you want some? You know they yeah. they're just really yes, generous. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and then uh, the next thing you know, I'm, I you know the answer in improv is always yes. Right. Yeah. Now. Uh, that's <laughs> and so when the guy handed me the rum, I just know after all these years you drink you drink the rum yeah. and then another guy hands me a cigarette and I'm <laughs> you can see me start to say yeah, well yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. I can't smoke a cigarette yeah. you're not allowed to do that in American television but immediately I start to say no and then I just remember that the answer is always yes so I'm the next thing you know I'm smoking a cigarette and drinking rum with these teenagers and I'm sitting on a wall and um, it looks like a bad production of Grease yeah. uh, but it was it's so... it was uh, but that was Great. I was very, very happy to see, you know, that you can you can cross barriers. I've found yeah. this all my life. Um, meeting, you know, sometimes you'll 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 get in a cab and the driver is just from is from Ukraine or you or yeah. from a different part of the world and they don't speak much English. But I've always noticed that if you're humble and you're sweet and you keep trying, you can make them laugh, yeah. even if you don't speak their language. And people, you realize, okay, that's the thing. It is, at the risk of sounding maudlin or corny, it is an, so nice when you can connect to people Absolutely. through humor. And you see that there's an instant connection. And in so much of the show, I think my favorite thing was just these people laughing. And they're laughing at me yeah. or with me, right. but uh, they they understand immediately that me trying to be erotic with these <laughs> beautiful women in the rumba is is to be laughed at. Yeah, they, right. it, they know it instantly. Yeah, yes. it's not yes. like now this is a strange. No, no, no. That's just funny in any language because yeah. I'm sure there's a Cuban version of me yes. that's that's trying to dance with women and shouldn't and is very lonely and sad. Can you actually yeah. just very quickly speak about uh, that the nightclub scene there and kind of what? What happened? That was real. That's yeah. a real nightclub. Well, yeah. 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 People don't know. I don't think people know. About that. nightclub, 1830. 1830, yeah. 1830 yeah. nightclub. It has a, a salsa dance night. Uh, and a huge. And kind of that they were having anyway. It was just they awesome. were having it anyway. I'm yeah. really serious. I mean, the people go there. Like, people know that this is the place to go watch professional level salsa. <laughs> yes. yes. Seriously. And, they, and did they know? No. Yeah. We, we did get permission that I, I would get to dance there but no one in the crowd knew and it was a total <laughs> surprise and I was wearing that ridiculous outfit with the see-through shirt and amazing. I had to put that on I had to, there was no place for me to dress so I climbed into our van and the lights weren't on in the van so I'm dressing <laughs> in the dark and I then I that. put uh, a coat over it and then I'm sort of work, Jose and I are working our way to the side and we get the camera set up and I'm just a, my only my concern when I saw the, the special was does it look like we just staged this and it's fake because it's because it, it's so it, uh, it's shot and sort sort of a, sh of a flat shot um, for the silliness of it but it was absolutely real it was real people yes. were at a real salsa nightclub it was a big deal uh, everyone's having a good time and yeah. suddenly this madman <laughs> uh, dances out and start and I started doing all that stuff and then you just she shots at people staring just like why confused. yeah they were just they're confused confu I'm, yeah. I'm confused <laughs> yeah I think you, the reactions you could absolutely tell that people are just like what yeah. Is this? Yeah. like yes. it's just surprise who is this guy who is, who is this awful yeah. man who is this awful <laughs> man and why is man <laughs> into our huevos or whatever uh, Jose what was a memory that you'll either from the show or not that you'll oh, kind of take away from uh, this well actually I, I, the same thing the, the people were great Great. Uh, yeah. There was one point where we were shooting a shot, a sunset shot, at a kind of their version of a state park, and oh, okay. um, some officials came up to me and the camera guy, and they said, "You are absolutely not allowed to film here. You must pack up immediately." And I'm a coward, so I go, "All right, uh, <laughs> James, you know, turn off the camera." And James goes, five more minutes." And I went, five more minutes?" And the guy goes, 
All right. <laughs> so he, I thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. He said, we'll be back in five. And he gave us the shot, this beautiful sunset shot that we had been waiting 25 minutes to get. Yeah. He let us do it. So there was some you know, sternness a, there, but there's also some flexibility. There's a real, I really yeah, there's, a, there's humanity. There's, there's a, humanity, yes. There's humanity there. And, and then Conan, I, I mean, I, and I, honestly, we've spoke, spoken a lot today about things you'll remember, but is there a specific kind of moment in time that when you look back on this in a year, two years, five years, they'll be like, oh, that was a, a certain memory of this kind of whole trip? Uh, wow, it's hard to say if there's one. Because I you're in such a, a you, cause you're Yeah, there's not, I mean, it's dude. just hard to say there's one, but I, my favorite thing about my job and in general and about travel, and then when you combine the two, is that it's nice to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. And there are moments um, where you know, I'm in a linen suit and I'm dancing with, with a street street performers <laughs> and I'm in Havana <laughs> and I kind of look at the tapestry of my life and think, why is this happening? I don't know, but I'm not going to question it. And so yeah. I like those moments where I'm, I've am i been transformed into another person and yeah. uh, there's about 30 of those in, in the special and those are the things I'm hungry for. I'm like a shark i'm always hungry for the next uh moment where i'm like in finland i'm i'm on a i remember when we were shooting in finland and i was on a dog sled by myself <laughs> and um i was being shot from a distance but i'm on a dog sled by myself and at one point i passed the camera crew and i'm just going across the tar the tundra in the arctic circle on a dog sled wearing a big fur coat <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just looking around and I'm realizing this is my life right now. I'm, and I'm alone. Yeah. And uh, there was a time I was shooting a remote with Mr. T years and years ago. It was a late night show. And we just thought of a bit where Mr. T is driving me in a ro an a open convertible, a, 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 a Rolls Royce with no top, the top down. And Mr. T is driving me, and I'm in the passenger seat, and we're trying to get this shot. And so they told Mr. T, just drive along for a while, and we'll get the shot set up, and then you can turn around and drive back. And as Mr. T is driving, he's driving for quite a while, I get really tired, and I fall asleep. <laughs> and then I passed out cold. And about five minutes later, I wake up, and I don't know where I am, and I just see fall foliage leaves passing by me at 50 miles an hour. And I languidly turn over, and I see Mr. T driving a car. And I was looking at him, and I was like, Mr. T's driving. <laughs> and you're thinking, we've all had dreams. Yeah, yeah. right. The beauty of my life is that I was like, this is a dream. And then I'm like, no, it's not. And I think Cuba had a lot of that feeling of, yeah. I woke up and I'm now in this strange world. I'm dancing with this beautiful woman. Um, I'm, you know, looking at her inappropriately. Uh, I'm far from my family. I've had character. a lot of rum. No, I was not a character. That is me. That is... Life is but a dream. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been uh, amazing. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank and you. Thank you. Sorry thank about the set. Thank Sorry you. about the set. Uh, uh, we'll have. Can we get a better set? Or is yeah. this, just... well, uh, this is probably as good as it's ever going to get. Uh, but uh, thank you all for watching uh, for our YouTube Conan and Cuba Q and A. And of course, please watch the full episode teamcoco.com. It's great. Slash Cuba. It's fantastic. As well as you can see behind the scenes stuff and photos and all that good gravy please subscribe to our youtube channel in the description below and uh thanks for joining us see you guys later peace out peace out